I formally welcome all our participants and our eminent resource person today to the 5D International Faculty Development Program on Research Methodology organized jointly by SIAD and VMM. A very welcome, sir, and we express our heartiest gratitude to you for finding time from your busy schedule and coming here to share your experience with us. Welcome, sir. Today's, Thank you, Welcome, sir. Today, uh, we have among us Professor Abhay Kumar, who is the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Prakap University, Jaipur, and the uh, lecture will be on research application in social science. Professor Abhay Kumar is presently Honorable Vice Chancellor at Pratap University, Jaipur, Rajasthan. He has obtained PhD degree from the Department of Business Management HNB Garwal University, Srinagar Garwal. He has a total work experience of more than 39 years. He has been an entrepreneur for three years and worked in the industry for over 16 years as senior manager personnel. However, he has keen interest in the field of marketing management, strategy being his forte. He has more than 20 years of experience in teaching and research. He has a good number of research papers published to his credit. He has also headed several management institutes and worked in senior positions at universities of repute. He has been supervising PhD, MPhil and MBA students in their research work and projects. He has also been the principal investigator of government-sponsored projects during his career. During his academic journey, he has conducted lots of capacity-building programs and also been the chairperson and resource persons in various national and international conferences. He has been awarded the outstanding contribution by VC to education sector by ASCOM Outstanding Scholar Award for Contribution to Education and Research by s -Byte Technologies, etc. He is in the advisory board member of some prestigious organizations, both nationally and internationally. Apart from being Dean and Director Management and Pro Vice Chancellor in his various assignments, Professor Abhay Kumar has also handled additional responsibilities as Chairperson, Entrepreneurship and Incubation Cell, Director Training and Placement Cell. Welcome to you, sir, and over to you. Uh, thank you, Munmun, ma'am. Uh, it is, in fact, uh, my privilege to be here. Uh, today and uh, the invitation which I have got, of course, you have said so much uh, which maybe I deserve or don't deserve, I don't know. I have been a multitasker in my life, trying to learn yes. and learn things every time. Every facet of life which I have come to, I have tried to learn something even from my students, I am doing so. So, so, so research uh, topic which I had been given by Dr. Viswajit today is a bit uh, away from my own stream, but I have an interest in that. So, so let's uh, uh, start with the topic today. The topic is research application in social sciences. Now, what is a science? Uh, a science is any system of knowledge that is concerned with the physical world and its phenomena. And that entails unbiased observations and systemic experimentation. We all know that. That science is unbiased observations and systemic experimentation. In general, what we mean is that a science involves a pursuit of knowledge covering general truths or the operations of fundamental laws. There are some fundamental laws which science has uh, to, be, to be followed in science. Now let's go to the next slide. What is social science now? Social science uh, is any branch of academic study or a science that deals with human behavior in its social and cultural aspects. You know, my interest in this particular uh, aspect be became more um, say, uh, became much higher in nature because of the behavioral science we had studied during our MBA. Way back, I completed my MBA in 1980. So, so at that point of time, we had a subject by the name of behavioral science. And I was very, very impressed by how to manage people by understanding their behavior. So social science came into this. So usually included within the social sciences are cultural or social anthropology, sociology, psychology, political science, and economics. 
Now, we all know about the research cycle, but let's brush it up a bit in the next slide. Well, there's a problem. We find out certain objectives for research. We have a research strategy being formulated, then create a research design, have to do literature review. And this also becomes very important because I see that some of the students I've been guiding and I've been uh, looking for have been doing literature review uh, just for the sake of doing it. Let's not do that. Let's find out the basic gaps actually which exist in that particular topic which have not been researched upon and still to be taken. We have then to gather uh, data, then to interpret that data, what are our findings and this cycle goes on and on. That means it is not a one go cycle in my opinion but maybe you again encounter some problems you have to change your objectives during the, the process of research. So this is how a research cycle operates. Then we have certain scientific methods means we have a we have certain question maybe and what are those questions what does the scientist want to learn more about this is again uh, talking about uh, gaps in the literature review and what are the gaps which are existing it is followed by uh, say research gathering of information then as we all know we come over to hypothesis an educated guess of an answer to the question we have termed it an educated guess. Right now, hypothesis is still a guess for us. Then we have procedure or method. That means written and carefully followed step by step experiment designed to test the hypothesis. We have to use certain methodologies by which this procedure or method can be done. Then we have next is the data information collected during the experiment. Again, Every step has its own importance. Then we have observations. That means written description of what was noticed during the experiment. That means when a scientific experiment is done, observation is very important. And you know, interpreting that observation is also extremely important. Then we have a conclusion that was the hypothesis correct or incorrect. This is the scientific method of research and I am sure all of us are very, very, uh, uh, understand it very well. And during the say past as honorable speakers who have already been uh, giving their thought, thoughts on the uh, research methodology process, they must have talked a lot about it. So, so I am making it specific to a certain area. Now, what are the various areas of research in social sciences? First, let's talk about anthropology. Actually, I'll talk about these areas with certain examples. Like one example in one research was or can be from the jungle to urban centers, body image is testimony of women in three different cultures. Now, what do you mean by that? What is the body image and self-esteem of women in three different cultures ranging from jungle to urban centers? This is a wonderful research which was done in anthropology. The aim of this study is to compare body image, body perception, body satisfaction, body related self esteem and overall self esteem of women from three different cultural backgrounds. Now, the study had its own findings. But, but the point is, what I want to stress is that in social sciences, there are so many areas in which research can still be done. And this is the era of multicultural diversity in which uh, say the research is not limited to a single department or a single school. We have two or three schools or two or three departments can come together. Engineering can come with social sciences. Engineering can come with management. Engineering can come with architecture while doing research. So students of two or three areas can, can come together if the topic is such. Then communication after anthropology is example is learning to lie effects of practice on the cognitive cost of lying just see that means ki what is the effect of practice on the cognitive cost of lying the lying is a cost to us that means in social sciences when research is being done as to what is the cognitive effect what is the cognitive cost of lying this this has been researched upon and the findings sometimes are very very different from what we perceive now other areas can be journalism for example Mahatma Gandhi and mass media. Just an example of research. 
Now, using the example of Mahatma Gandhi, we research that the profession is not incompatible with moral integrity. Sometimes people start thinking that professionalism and moral integrity or ethics cannot go together. No, it is not that. We reveal that there is much we can learn about journalism from Gandhi. His ethical approach to the profession and his view that the media is a means to serve the public provides valuable direction for all aspiring journalists. This is much needed today. We talk about yellow journalism. We talk about journalism in which people tend to have a tilt towards a political ideology or a philosophy. So research in these areas might try to help people who are upcoming journalists to do research in this and become better people and create a better society. So, so why is research? What is the application of research in these areas? Next is philosophy. The example is, for example, how the internet inflates estimates of internal knowledge. That is, as the internet has become a nearly ubiquitous research. So, so, so we have to understand that the, the internal knowledge from um, the internet has to be uh, to a certain extent that we must understand what exactly it has to be. Now, next is psychology. Uh, next slide, please. Psychology is uh, exploring the relationship, for example, between frequency of Instagram use, exposure to idealized images, and psychological well being in women. This has been taken up as a research project in India itself. Because here the psychological well being of women sometimes tends to be compromised. Now, research on the mental health effects of social networking have predominantly focused on Facebook with limited research investigating the effects of Instagram on psychological well-being. This research aims to address the link between Instagram use and a range of psychological variables in two parts. So, so this research had done a wonderful uh, job in terms of uh, comparing Instagram and Facebook as having an effect on the well-being of people. Sociology. The example would be changing work, changing health. Can real work time flexibility promote health behaviors and well-being? These are all examples I'm giving of what research can be done in various areas of social sciences. Now, what are the characteristics of scientific methods? First, let's go with it. Step-by-step uh, step uh, step procedure to seek facts, theories. So there must be a step-by-step -step procedure to seek facts. Second, scientific methods rely on evidence. It cannot be just speculation. We have to use certain concepts, keeps objectivity, follows ethical neutrality. It formulates generalization, ensures verifiability. That means it has to be verified. Whatever the facts are, whatever the findings are, they have to be verified and uses logical reasoning. Now, what are the approaches in social research? Number one, maybe these terms may be new to some of us. One is positivism. That is to establish the scientific laws of society, the causal relationship, how which are, which are arrived by testing hypothesis as in science. Just as we do to test hypothesis in science, here also we have to establish the scientific laws of society, a causal relationship. Then we have interpretivism to build an understanding of the motives and intentions that underpin social behavior. What are the basic um, say, intentions and motives which are underpinning social behavior? We have to understand that. Then critical social research to ask critical questions with a view to changing society or to transform unequal power relationships. We see that unequal power relationships are existing everywhere in the society. So we have to do a critical social research in terms of professions, in terms of, uh, say, say, people, economic uh, differences, all these approaches are there in social research. Now, next we go to steps in scientific methods. Now, what are the steps in scientific method? The first is a systemic step-by-step -step procedure. Make an observation, then form a hypothesis, make a prediction or testable explanation data, make a prediction based on the hypothesis and test the prediction. It is very simple. So uh, in the end, what we have to do is we have to 
test the prediction we are predicting something we have to test whether the prediction is correct or not it, does it is it in harmony to our observation or not is it in harmony with the, whether the hypothesis is uh, correct or not so these these are the steps in scientific methods now next we go to observation we have to make an observation i'll give an example of the us elections which happened and this is all uh, given in certain texts twitter appears to have played a very important role in the recent us elections based upon anecdotal media reports and personal observations now what was this i'll give you a difference between what the us elections uh, to how the us elections took place and what was the media and social um, uh, sciences effect on that and what about india so now this observation is about the role that twitter plays in spreading information the research which has been done and what has been found is we think it is important why because we know that information plays an important part in the decision making process for individual voters that means what sort of information is being received by the voters since twitter appears to have an impact on information based on the observation done in the research it is worth exploring whether there is a measurable impact or not in other words twitter seems to be important the research question will be designed to find out if it actually is important or not so so the the, the observation is that twitter has had an impact but but let's find out so next what would the hypothesis be how to formulate an hypothesis so in the next slide we see that hello next slide we see that i hope uh, the person who is as a operating so there, there is a problem with the network i will do it okay anyway so let me go to the next slide uh, I, i would just think what i have been talking about and i'll just uh, go in sequence so you can catch me up later on so what would the how would the we formulate the hypothesis not we say that twitter increases flow of information and raises the informational awareness of voters about topics related to elections that means it increases the flow of information during election time and raises the informational awareness of the voters about topics related to elections now the hypothesis relates information on twitter to the informational awareness or knowledge of voters in elections this is the first part second the causal mechanism is left unstated but could be a variety of things the causal mechanism is left unstated here but there it can be a variety of things like for example number 1 people are directly influenced by following twitter feeds and reading tweets that means the question would be whether the people are directly influenced by following the twitter feeds and reading tweets or say people are indirectly influenced as other information sources they are having for example news reports radio broadcasts magazines stories so are they influenced by stories being uh, promulgated on twitter or not now what other causal mechanisms might link information on twitter to the knowledge of voters now what are the other ca causal mechanisms we have to understand and see that so next would be say prediction i am giving you an example so that we may understand the prediction is based on the hypothesis now what would that be now since we have got the slide the more that a new story is mentioned on twitter the more aware the voters will be about that new story that means the more the story is mentioned the number of times it is um, say impressed upon so the voters will be more influenced every time this is all also what happens with advertisements we see that the more you um, project advertisements on the same target customers it tends to influence their mindset now this prediction relates a measure of information contained on twitter to a measure of information held by voters that means these two information start correlating each other now the main observable uh, what is the main observable implication of this hypothesis it is that the more mentions of a new story on twitter will lead to increased awareness of this story among voters the the, the more you and put it on uh, say uh, twitter the more would the influence be on the voters so what other possible observable implications can be derived 
could other media forms also show an increase of coverage about a particular story we have found that it was not that in terms of the us elections now let's go to testing in testing we have to find appropriate data to test this prediction we have predicted something about twitter so we have to find appropriate data to test this prediction now remember the main prediction is that more mentions of a story on twitter will lead to more knowledge of that story among voters now what data would we need to investigate this claim actually i am not simply uh, telling you about what research methodology is but actually i am talking more about its applications in trying to give you a practical approach to the thing so maybe next time if you call me i can give you a text on the entire research methodology so so let's go and see what data would we need to investigate this claim the claim is again about the spread of information from twitter to voters so we need to measure the information shared on twitter How, what are the counts of tweets we need to think about what content matter what tweets should be included and what time range do these tweets have an effect upon the slides are coming back so so let's have the slide on something like general points on research design yeah now mixed methods analysis is the gold standard combination of quantitative as well as qualitative data they could also include formal models mathematical representations of decisions which is often referred to as game theory though in reality game theory is a subset of formal modeling itself now matching the research design to the hypothesis under investigation is very critical right now matching the research design to the hypothesis under investigation becomes critical because how questions are asked and answered what counts as evidence this would more be important what would be counting as evidence in this case so so we have to understand about scientific attitude what is the scientific attitude in the next slide first is determinism that means scientists presume that the world is a lawful place where events occur because of other events that are present in the environment this is how social sciences do things do not happen haphazardly in the universe you must understand that instead things happen because of a consequence of other events happening this is determinism then we have empiricism the act of objective observation of the phenomena that one is interested in is empiricism that means if i have an interest in a certain phenomena the part of the research in which we express our own interest if we are observing only that it is empiricism then the last scientific method would be experimentation an experiment is the act of controlling variables to determine the effect of one variable on a phenomena now the independent variable is the condition that is changed and the dependent variable is the phenomena that is being observed again the independent variable is the condition that is changed and the dependent variable is the phenomena that is being observed next would be replication after determinism empiricism and experimentation we have replication the results of a single fully controlled experiment are important on their own however only after uh, say repeated replication can the findings of the experiment be added to the collection of scientific knowledge of a field that means we have already have a controlled experiment the results of a single experiment is with us it is important but then we have to go on uh, repeating and getting replications of those findings so that we understand that the collection of scientific knowledge in the field is correct and is up to the mark replication is the main method used to display reliability of a scientific finding we all know that without replication scientific findings cannot be um, say accepted then we have parsimony the lay person that means a layman would know the word parsimony as frugality now the scientific use of this particular word parsimony describes how the most 
simple and logical explanation of a phenomena should be considered before any highly say contrived explanations uh, examined that means that uh, how we have to understand the most simple and logical explanations of any phenomena how to consider that before any highly contrived explanations may be examined that means let's understand the basics first now what would be the philosophic doubt the scientists constantly questions and seeks to set aside preconceived notions or beliefs in order to find the truth of science all biases have to be removed any scientist constantly questions and seeks to set aside preconceived notions or beliefs if i have a preconceived notion before and before coming to a for example i'll give you a layman's this thing if i come to a discussion uh, across the table and i have a preconceived notion i would never be able to do a proper um, a discussion and this is the same with research let's correlate research with our daily lives in 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 terms of our daily life we are doing small uh, say researches and uh, research work every day now inductive reasoning what is inductive reasoning that means with observation we go to a pattern then we have a tentative hypothesis and a theory again this is inductive um, reasoning now studying several individual cases and drawing a generalization that means we study several individual cases and draw a generalization as to this is happening used when facts are studied truths are uncovered induction involves observation and generalization a few experimental farms are studied for an example and a conclusion arrived i'll give you a small example of um, maybe it may correlate or correlate not correlate what we are doing but this is a wonderful example we might have that uh, harvard had made a 75 year long uh, study on almost 268 undergrads 75 year long to find out they studied their personal life their political views everything and what was the conclusion the conclusion was what makes people happy they had to say the principal investigator said what makes people happy is relationship so what they found out in the research after 75 long years was that what makes people happy is simply relationship and we have very aptly understood that during this covid-19 pandemic that relationship and empathy plays the most important role it is neither money nor um, say pelfs or anything which power which um, say promotes us to be happy so, so i'm not digressing from the topic but since i am a man of management so i have a art of digressing means i usually do it in the class as well so now deductive reasoning from theory to hypothesis to observation to confirmation this is what deductive reasoning would be that means here we are applying a general principle to a specific case now let's say there is a major premise all apples are fruits all fruits grow on trees this is the minor premise now therefore all apples grow on trees this is the conclusion i'm just simplifying it by way of examples i'm not saying that this is a, going to be an elaborate research on this topic but to make you understand if there are certain students also here now false premise can lead to fake results also like if i say most regular employees are sincere then i say as a minor premise that mohan is the regular employee then hence mohan is sincere is it a logical relationship no it is not if it is not then 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 what is the uh, cause that not all and uh, say uh, say general principles can be applied to all specific cases so we have to understand that now next we have to uh, be clear about correlation versus causation correlation can be confused with causation for example number of fire engine at and damage at a fire site divorce increase and crime increase have correlation but no causation now why why this example one can observe correlation but not cause so infer cause which is fallible avoid infallible inferences now if x causes y if x produces y if x is present y will infallibly happen because x causes y but ensure particular condition that means a condition may be existing in science it exists that provided for example pure water boils at 100 degrees at sea level only we always say 
the water boils at 100 degrees but then if it is a pure water it will boil at 100 degrees only at sea level take it in the mountains take it to a higher level it will not so we have to be understanding and very clear about that also now what are the types of research according to its purpose so we will go into types of research according to various aspects like in terms of purpose we have theoretical research theoretical research is also referred to as pure or basic research as it focuses on generating knowledge regardless of its practical application that means pure theory what the practical application may be doesn't matter but simply focus on generating knowledge for example a philosophical dissertation since the aim is to generate new approaches from existing data without considering how its findings can be applied or implemented in practice they are not concerned by implementation or application it is simply that new approaches have to be created from existing data then another type of research according to purpose it is applied research applied research draws on the theory to generate practical scientific knowledge and its use is very common in stem fields such as engineering computer science and medicine so when you talk about social sciences we can talk about applied areas also now this type of research is subdivided into two types first is technological applied research and second is scientific applied research when we talk about technological applied research it looks towards improving efficiency in a particular productive sector through the improvement of processes or machinery related to said productive processes now in the other that is scientific applied research it has predictive purposes predictions though this type of research design we can measure certain variables to predict behavior why useful to the goods and services sector such as consumption patterns and visibility viability of commercial projects there are so many commercial projects going on and what are the basic consumption patterns of the customers so if we, we have to use this scientific applied research which has a predictive purpose we have to predict something for example in market research because by examining the consumption patterns strategies can be developed for the development of new products and marketing campaigns etc now being a man of management sometimes i use these examples because it is more of a management example not types of research according to its purpose then we have exploratory research now what is exploratory research we all know it is used for the preliminary investigation of a subject that is not yet well understood or sufficiently researched this is exploratory we are going to explore for example an investigation of the role social media in the perception of self image now what is the self image perception that that we have to investigate in terms of role of social media then according to uh, the depth of scope again we have descriptive research in the next slide the primary objective of descriptive research is to define the characteristics of a particular phenomenon without necessarily investigating the causes that produce it that means we are not going necessarily to investigate the causes that they are producing it we have to define the characteristics of a particular phenomenon for example investigating how the public senses of influential government officials differs between urban and non urban areas we see that the uh, uh, difference between especially in our country in india we find that in urban areas the influence of government officials is very different from that of a sarpanch in the rural area they have in their own way uh, an influence on the citizens there but then the influence is very different so so this would be help to, to research in this type of uh, research now according to uh, your depth of scope the uh, say the, the explanatory research is the most common type of uh, research method explanatory research and it is responsible for establishing cause and effect relationships that allow what they do they allow allow generalizations to be extended to similar realities well i may be going a bit fast so if there is something uh, which i may not be able to uh, say portray before you all so i would have to matlab uh, during the question answer session maybe i can uh, try to do justice to it 
now for example investigating the brittle behavior of a specific material when under compressive load this every science person physics person would understand for example investigating the brittle behavior of a specific material when under compressive load when you are compressing it then what would be the behavior of the material this is also part of research science i am talking about applied area social sciences everything we will talk about now according to uh, correlational research now what is correlational research the purpose of this type of scientific research is to identify the relationship between two or more variables for example correlational studies are often used in psychology as well as other fields like medicine because we have to correlate what we have to correlate relationship between two or more variables especially in medicine and we are seeing it at present during this uh, crisis especially that uh, as as the research is going on in terms of medicine so many research projects are there across the globe and the best part i would like to intervene to say is every country is helping each other so so that is how we are sharing information this is how research should be in fact from local let's go global this is my philosophy so let's be actually when we are having a virtual fdp right now i think we have already come together and this is a platform we must use not only for uh, say bettering our research process but also to understand each other better now the next would be as qualitative research i am just seeing the time so that ki my time slot may permit me to finish it off early so qualitative research would be these are often used in the social sciences to collect compare and interpret information it has a linguistic semiotic basis and is used in techniques such as discourse analysis interviews surveys records and participant observations for example examining the effects of sleep deprivation on mood again a very uh, say important and a burning topic right now people are investigating a lot about the effects of sleep deprivation on mood as of now because it, it is being said that people are losing their sleep during this crisis out of a fear psychosis and it is having a deflection of mood in different areas sometimes they are too high on mood sometimes they become too low so this research can be very important then again next we would be having and um, say qualitative research uh, uh, after that we have said it delves into phenomenon i have already talked about through quantitative data quantitative research collection and using mathematical statistical and computer aided tools to measure them we all know this what is quantitative research for example conducting a computer simulation on vehicle strike impacts to collect a quantitative data again we are using so many vehicles now what would the impact of a strike on our vehicle so conducting a computer simulation is again a sort of a research in which we collect quantitative data to understand and the durability of a vehicle is determined because of that it goes into industry now we have experimental research it is about designing or replicating a phenomenon whose variables are manipulated under strictly controlled conditions in order to identify or discover its effect on another independent variable or object now example i'll give so that we may understand randomized control trial studies for measuring the effectiveness of new pharmaceutical drugs on human subjects it is going on right now this research is going on right now so many vaccines are being produced and we are happy that the vaccines have come into the market and what is happening is randomized control trial studies have been done and are still going on for measuring the effectiveness of the new pharmaceutical drugs on human subjects because still there is a controlled randomized trial trial can be in many phases how can we understand what the after effects of the drug would be and how will be the drug affecting our body for example the corona virus in itself has a is a single rna whereas in our body we have a say intertwined dna now how would that single rna affect the body and how would we be able to control it so this is experimental research and then we come to non experimental research it is also known as observational study that is it focuses on the analysis of a phenomenon in its natural context how for example a study on the effects 
of the use of certain chemical substances in a particular population group can be considered a non -exper experimental study now what do we mean by that certain chemical substances in a particular population group now if we say that say we have 60 plus age group people what would be the effect of zinc what would be the effect of zinc chloride on them because we are saying that right now let's have multivitamins which contain zinc so what would be the effect on the group from 60 plus what effect would we be having on a group of 45 to 60 so this would be a non experimental research where we would simply be understanding what is happening we have a kasi experimental research next next slide shows that this it controls only some variables of the phenomenon under investigation and is therefore not entirely experimental how it only controls some variables because in an experimental sort of a research variables are fully controlled for example assessing the effectiveness of an intervention measure in reducing the spread of antibiotic resistance bacteria again we have come to medicine because this is the burning situation right now so i am talking about uh, pharma especially examples of pharma because everyone is reading it on whatsapp groups and on facebook so so let's understand the research more with examples of that the effectiveness of an intervention measure in reducing the spread of antibiotic resistant bacteria now if a bacteria becomes resistant to certain antibiotics we have to study the effectiveness of an intervention measure what sort of intervention measure should be adopted to make the resistance lower the resistance level of that bacteria then we have deductive investigation in the next slide in this type of research reality is explained by general laws that point to certain conclusions deductive research we have inductive research i'll go through these um, a bit uh, um, with a more speed so in this type of research knowledge is generated from an observation to achieve a generalization actually it takes a lot of time this this particular um, um, say ppt which i might have prepared would go in for full day if you would have uh, that much time uh, with explanations and examples now hypothetical deductive investigation it is based on observing reality to make a hypothesis then use deduction to obtain a conclusion and finally verify or reject it through experience that means our experience helps us in that next would be longitudinal study also referred to as diachronic research it is the monitoring of the same event individual or group over a defined period of time for example a cohort study that analyzes changes in a particular indigenous population over a period of 15 years i'll give you another management example say it was way back many years back walter michel who was a teacher in uh, stanford she she used the marshmallow test and what was that that was in a class in a cohort say of about 30 or 40 students young students she gave two marshmallows to each of them and said do this particular job which i am giving you if you complete the job you can eat these two marshmallows however if you wait for me to come back i'll give you two more if you don't eat it at that point of time everything was being seen with a camera now it was seen that about 85 percent of the students and more than that ate the two marshmallows they could not wait the rest about 10 to 15 percent waited and when the teacher came they gave them two more they ate four marshmallows now these students were tracked for the next 15 to 20 years of their career and what was observed was that those who believed in delayed gratification were more successful in their life than others because they could wait for the actual results to come now this is how researchers are done then we have a cross sectional study also referred to as string corners research the cross sectional research design is used to observe phenomena an individual or a group of research subjects at a given time then we have longitudinal studies i have already told you that i think now what do you mean by research design i'll skip one or two slides a research design in fact is a framework or a blueprint for conducting research we all know that it specifies the details of the procedures which are necessary for obtaining the information needed to structure and or say observe the research problems or solve the research problems next 
define the information needed design the exploratory descriptive and or causal phases of research i have talked all about that what were the exploratory descriptive causal phases specify the measurement and scaling procedures construct and pre test a questionnaire interviewing form or an appropriate form for data collection specify the sampling process and sample size develop a plan of data analysis then then what would the final points which i am say purport would be the social scientific research method is designed to answer questions or solve puzzles empirically theory and observation are used to develop a hypothesis evidence that is is used to test the validity of the hypothesis the hypothesis links theories with expected evidence then data analysis can take many different forms quantitative typically takes the form of statistical analysis then qualitative typically takes the form of case studies in management especially we we believe we we are based most researches are based on case studies also now there is an important role right now for all types of research and all types of researchers why i think i must say thank you because i have cleared with the slides but then i want to talk more without the slides as well i think i have said five or seven minutes more so uh, when when we talk about uh, say uh, research work uh, i think i would not talk away from the research methodology topic and give something which is in my mind uh, even the new education policy has talked about research in india we say fall way behind in terms of uh, research which can be translated into industry that means research should not be limited to libraries research should not be limited to attaching a dr before our names we must do research so that it benefits the society and that is how the western world and even china these days have been progressing because when we do certain research as faculty and teachers we must do it in coordination with the industry and once we do it in coordination with the industry they must give us what we have to uh, say research upon and we must tell them what the findings are and that those findings must again go back into society in terms of a product or a service and that is the most important thing so so when we talk about research methodology when we talk about the the steps of research methodology everything is fine but we must have a mindset for research we must get a mindset created within ourselves for research now for example we talk about startups especially with make in india say we have talked about startups how to um, say create new ventures we have venture capitalists and what not but in my opinion i beg to differ on certain things we can teach a student finance mathematics sciences accounts engineering everything we can teach but then what matters most we can make him an entrepreneur but uh, uh, if uh, i remember one book i had read in the 1970s uh, probably if i remember it was it was john spencer what he said was not every student would become an entrepreneur in his life or her life but he or she would be always need to think like one that means whether we have a startup or not we must have an entrepreneurial mindset within ourselves we must have a create a mindset for things which we are going to do and that is what actually i want to say is uh, the same thing about research as well the mindset should be very clear why am i doing this and what is the basic objective behind doing this research and collaboration becomes very important we cannot exist as isolated islands of excellence these days even between faculty and teachers let's collaborate we are senior teachers we are junior ones let's help each other the junior ones are more technologically savvy the senior ones have more experience let's involve the students in research and that is what the new education policy 2020 says that even the school level certain internships are being given and research is being promoted so so that is all i have to say thank you so much thank you sir for a very inspiring and detailed uh, presentation uh, into the types of research along with uh, the uh, very lucid and uh, clear examples the examples were very very good and uh, i i hope that the students uh, uh, sorry the participants have also enjoyed it as much 
So now I request uh, the participants to ask their ask questions. Their questions. Yes. Good evening, sir. Uh, Good evening. Good evening, sir. Sir, I have some. Uh, I have few questions, not one question, sir. Really? So okay. Great. Great. It will be great if you just uh, listen to me for, with the patience. Yeah, please. So first yeah, thing, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rakesh, go uh, one by one. Ask me one question. Okay. Part. Okay, so first thing, sir, in the some concepts where each we, which we were showing in the first part of the slide, there you showed yeah. two concepts like empiricism and uh, parsicism like that. Okay, so can you yeah. give me two examples yeah. of that? Means any example because I want to know the concept. Empiricism yeah, why not? Uh, I, think, I think you want to talk about positivism. Posit no, sir, positivism not. It's the empiricism. Achha, achha. Let, let me I'll, I'll give an example, but I'll give the definition first because that definition should be what the statement actually portrays. And therefore, I'll give an example with that because I believe in examples. Your examples just can't understand anything. Exactly, so, sir. So, where was it? Can you show me the slide first? If it can be again be given. Uh, no, the slide cannot be brought. Actually, I am not having the slides. I think that you're not having it. Yes, Tromos yeah, yeah. Uh, showing the slide. Yes, sir, give me a moment. I'm sharing. Sure, 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 sure. You are talking about replication, parsimony, and others? Yes, 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 is that, that, that. Okay, okay, that, okay, okay. Yeah. I'll give you an example. example. Now, uh, you were talking about uh, um, replication first. Um, uh, no, no, sir. Empiricism. Parsimony. Yes, parsimony and then empiricism. Okay. Now, what is parsimony? The lay person knows the word parsimony as a frugality asset. Now, what would be the scientific use? The scientific use of the word describes how the most simple and logical explanation of a phenomena has said that how a most simple and logical explanation of the phenomena should be considered before any highly contrived explanation is examined. Means, what I mean is that you must start from the basics before going into very highly contrived explanation and examine them. Start from the base of simple and logical explanation. Because what is happening in research right now is that we tend to talk about very, um, say, highly placed explanations of things. Let's not do it. Let's start with small and simple and logical explanations of any phenomena, especially in scientific research. And then consider any highly contrived explanations after that. Okay? This is what I mean. Thank you, sir. Uh, and the second second question is, sir, uh, yeah. you said an example like uh, not in a non-experimental research that the 60 years people, suppose if we consider the 60 age of uh, people, if we are giving them the zinc chloride, then the, it's, it's, it's uh, no, you, according to you, you are telling that it's a non-experimental research. But sir, I am no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying an experiment has been it has to be done to develop the drug. But a non-experimental would be to understand by terms of survey and by talking to them and giving them questionnaires as to what is the effect of that particular on certain age groups. Because effects and causal effects may differ from age to age. Like for example, I'll tell you, even as the vaccines right now are uh, say considered, the effect on certain age band has been different during research for 60 plus. The, the effect has been a bit different. Some people in the middle age groups of 45 to 60 who are being administered vaccines have, have, have had different symptoms. So research is a continual process. Even after a proper vaccine is developed, then also the effect after effects on a certain age group, say after one year, two years, five years, 10 years, that will also have to keep on determined. So apart from a scientific experimental research, this second non-experimental research would also have to be continuously being done. This is what I mean to say. And what was the third, Mr. Rakesh? Your voice is not coming. Oh, 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 oh sir, I was muted. 
uh, sir, the diachronic uh, research which you said there was an example where the word cohort study was there. What do you what do you mean by this cohort study? Cohorts is a class. That means a cohorts of sixty. That means a class of sixty. That is all. Okay. Okay. And the sir, in synchro and the synchronous sir, research. Question, three questions. Rakesh, you have already asked three questions. Uh, sir, the last question. The last okay, question, sir. So the synchronous research, can you provide an example of the synchronous research? Yeah, why not? What is synchronous and asynchronous mode of teaching? Tell me that first. I'll simplify it. I won't talk about research right now. Give me an example of synchronous method of teaching and online teaching and asynchronous method. You're a faculty, I presume. Yes, uh, but in that in this moment, sir, I, I am not being able to answer you. But uh, I'll tell you what happens, sir. There are many methodologies in which sometimes the students, uh, while having a uh, online class, simply attends that class and listens to the teacher. He or she cannot discuss with the peer group, or he or she cannot discuss with the teacher at that moment of time. So sometimes synchronous, asynchronous, blended teaching, these are all terms which has come. So similarly, just translate them onto research also. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, research is not a very tough subject as such, we tend to make it so hard in our lives. Research is in fact having new findings, innovations. So, so I'll, I'll give you one small example, that uh, uh, there is a saying that necessity is the mother of invention. But you know what has happened during the COVID times? Necessity has become the mother of adoption. We have simply trying, been trying to adopt technology which may be especially in India, we would have got through in the next four or five years, which we have done in the one year period only, in the past COVID um, pandemic came into being. So what is happening is, research becomes faster and we tend to do things better when we have a crisis. So we, 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 are, we are better crisis managers in fact. I'll give a small example. Before the crisis, India was not able to produce a single paper kit. Okay? It was all being imported, not a single ventilator. You won't believe me. Sorry, Ra Rakesh, you were listening to me, you were nodding your head and you never told me that I was muted. No, sir. Actually, all of a sudden you go silent. That's why I was thinking. I just want to say, but you are just uh, all of a sudden okay, the you, voice was not you, coming. You should have immediately told me that uh, I was uh, muted. So, in fact, I have wasted my message. Uh, okay, anyway, what was the point till which I was talking to you? Yes, sir. You were telling that uh, India uh, before the pandemic, India was not yeah. being able to <laughs> make the PP kit. In two to three months' time, and maximum four months, we were producing four lakh PPT kits, PP kits every month. Now, how is that to be? You know why? Every human being has an innate desire to and, and achieve, get new things in life, innovate in life. But the point is, we don't tend. Sometimes we are, we are so introvert in ourselves, we don't tend to bring it out. That is why it is the art and beauty of all teachers right now to bring out the latent talent within each student. Bring it, become mentors, right? Don't become teachers simply. I'll tell you, I am a big proponent of the ancient Guru Shishi Parampara. I believe in that. I believe personally that maybe I am a father of two biological children, but I am still a father of more than 5,000 children right now in my university. So that is how you should think. Every teacher should think. So this is how research is an unending process in life. This is continual. Let's not limit it to research methodology or something. So, so that is my answer to you. Thank you, Rakesh, for being for having such a question. Thank you. So if there is nothing more, can I leave, uh, ma'am? Because I have to go for another webinar right now. Yes, Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, giving us your time and touching upon a very important aspect of collaboration. Thank you, sir. Thank you for Thank your you presence. Thank you so and much. Thank you. I'm very obliged to Syed as well as your college, and especially yourself, ma'am. You have conducted and moderated the thing very well. And my, my sincere thanks to all the participants today, the audience especially, who have been kind enough not to push so many questions at me which I could not answer. So thank you so much.
Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we come to the end of the first session and move on to the uh, next session. Uh, the second lecture today we have is on research methods in the sociology of international relations, exploring methodological innovations by Dr. Irina L. Per, who is researcher, Asia, Asia Pacific. Uh, sorry. Asia Pacific program at Center for Geopolitical and Security in Realism Studies, London, UK. She is also the owner CEO of Irina Lornia Top 2, next in education research consultancy, Romania. Thank you, ma'am, and a hearty welcome to you. And thank you for joining us and agreeing to share your views with our participants. Welcome, ma'am, and over to you. Uh, Moon Moon, ma'am. Excuse uh, me. Hello, hello. Sir. Good evening. Yeah, uh, sorry, yes. sorry. Good evening. Thank good evening. For uh, for your invitation, and uh, I'm trying to I try to prepare a lecture for you. I didn't know exact the audience, but I hope it will be interesting. Um, I saw uh, from the previous lecture that uh, you have learned a lot these days about uh, research methods. So I, I thought that I can bring with, uh, with uh, a little bit change. Uh, and um, to move on uh, uh, towards some concepts uh, in uh, the society, sociology of international relation, as well as if we talk about SIR, the goals, uh, with focus on development. So my, um, my presentation today is built on uh, a, a course I had uh, a few years ago at the University Vasile Goldish of Arad, Romania, for uh, bachelor and MA students in international relations. And I had this course uh, in sociology of international relations for seven, almost seven years. So today I will talk about uh, what means research methods in uh, sociology of international relation, exploring methodologi methodological innovation. And if you could help me with the PowerPoint presentation, please, for, for the public. Or I should try to... Uh, yes, ma'am, we will try. Okay, so um, how uh, uh, how I designed uh, that course at that time, uh, starting from an introduction in the sociology of international relations, talking a little bit about theories of international relations, about international order, global order, international society. Uh, uh, I want to say that today I will focus especially on the items in a red color, and but I wanted to present you all the structure of uh, this one semester course. And of course, there are a lot many other issues about international political system, non-state actors, globalization, regionalization, identity, international migration, religion, international relations, uh, in the, uh, religion in international relation, terrorism, societal security, environment security, and uh, especially global civil society and uh, human security, which I think the, these are the most representative uh, terms for the sociology in international relation these days. Um, going further, of course, uh, your question would be, what is sociology of international relations? Uh, it studies uh, international relations for, uh, as social facts, if we can say, analyzing their effects over societies, groups, social actors in general. We can say that this field of research add, try to add knowledge and to contribute to the articulation of a global public opinion. 
for most researchers, so the socio sociology of international relations has developed from political sociology. In fact, we can say that several disciplines in international relations, such as sociology of international relations, political sociology, sociology, political sciences, and theory or theories of international relations, uh, each uh, this field, every each one of these fields had some common points. So if you want to understand the better, let's say, an end to analyzing an angle of the, the best disciplines on international relations, uh, you should uh, read more also in other fields. So I agree with what said uh, my predecessor said, that we had to go towards a cross, uh, cross discipline, uh, discipline analysis. Going further, uh, the term of sociology of international relations appeared in the 60s in the French speaking academia. Uh, for example, Marcel Merle can be considered the initiator of uh, this disciplinary field, even if uh, later Raymond Aron titled the second part of his book, Peace and War, uh, uh, as Sociology Causes and Irregularity. Since the 70s, the sociology of international relations has developed uh, along two axes. On the one hand, uh, it sought to provide a way to understand international, international phenomena beyond the uniqueness of each event. So, influenced largely by the deep force of Renouva or Durosel, the French-speaking tradition proposed a classical structure for the study of international phenomena, making a distinction between the environment forces, actors, and the international systems. Uh, this principle of approaching international relations has been and always is influenced by the ubiquity of at the regular interval, intervals of international stage, imposing a political reading focus on violence um, or security totally disconnected from social gains. Consequently, the sociology of international relations tended to be dependent on international events. Flourishing in periods of calm during phenomena, it appears unable to provide the satisfactory answers in times of tension and the confrontation of powers becomes the dominant concern again. Paradoxically, this sociology fa favors empirical studies. The second uh, direction uh, uh, consists in the tendency to apply the international relations, the tools of political sociology. This methodological contribution has been an important production in the liter literature since the early 90s, when sociologists paid more attention to the in uh, international, we can say. Uh, the vast area of international relation is by definition interdisciplinary, as I said. Uh, for example, in the 50s, Quincy White listed no less than 23 disciplines at the time on international relations. There are two ways in which sociology can uh, be useful for the study of international relation as a theory or as a set of research concepts and methods. Uh, sociological theories influence the study of international relations. Directly, when it deals with issues of international relations, with punctual events and facts, and of course, indirectly, when applies sociological concepts uh, in the study of foreign, for, foreign policy, for example, national stereotypes, aspirations, values, standards of behavior, contact with other countries. Uh, Manisha, if you can mute your microphone. In conclusion, the sociology of international relations studies, international facts as social facts, actors of international events, their power and objectives, the means, tools, and techniques of international action, and of course, international events. Going a little bit farther, I will talk about theory of international relations. Uh, theory as a con conceptual field uh, 
uh, must take into account such social, philosophical, and ontological aspects on the one hand, and historical and epistemological uh, aspects on the other hand. So, when we talk about theory of international relations, uh, we talk about the history of ideas of international relations, about social philosophy of international relations, history of international relations as a scientific disciplines, and epistemology of international relations. I had added a, a smart uh, figure, a small figure about what uh, each each direction means uh, for the theory of international uh, relations. And uh, for example, the history of ideas uh, refers to the description of the gene genetic development of concepts, problem definition, and doctrines of thought in and about international relations, description uh, of the process of doctrinal and conceptual development, uh, in the history of international thought. Talking about social philosophy of international relations, formulation and or analysis of the norms and, or of an existing international society, philosophical construction of a new international social order, uh, decision on the question whether and in what manner an international society exists and which normative validity it, uh, its ex existential reasons can play, and so on. If we move further to the next slide, please. We can see that theory, uh, can uh, we reach theory uh, taking into account several stages, if I can say, or fields. So from concept, we uh, try to go to a construct, to a type and typology. Then we, uh, we try to build a, a conceptual framework. Then we have uh, the assumption, the hypothesis, and we try to, to, to uh, build a kind of law. Then we uh, go to axiom, proposition, theorem, or doctrine. And finally, the most complex is the model uh, in the scientific worldview and uh, the most uh, complex is of course the paradigm in the international relations theory. So uh, if we talk about types of theory, we have historical, sociological theory, inductive or empirical theory, and of course deductive or system analytical theory. About this, uh, my uh, previous speaker, the previous speaker also said more uh, facts. So I think we can move a little bit to the next uh, to the next uh, figure. When we try to uh, to describe the reality, a theory must uh, fulfill several functions, and uh, these functions to. It, the theory tries to describe, to explain, and to link with other theories. So uh, the theory in general have a constitutive function, and an interpretive function, an orientative function, a goal-defining function, a, and a legitimation function. Each, uh, each of these uh, try to offer a complex uh, view about what the roles and the function of the theory and what a theory should answer. Uh, but I want to make a, a, pair, um, a comment here. Even if we talk about research methods and theories and research uh, theories, international relations, and uh, not just there, and the uh, research models and so on, I think uh, the the, our goal should be that we should try to use the theories and the research methods methods in, um, in for the use of, uh, of the real society. I mean, uh, we have to find concrete solutions to our biggest problems. So not just doing research for research, but doing research for society. This, I, this, I think I should uh, emphasize. Moving to the next slide, please. Um, 
about the development of theory and theories in international relations, uh, I, off I try to offer a kind of uh, sketch about each uh, theory, how, uh, the, how uh, it appeared uh, the th in time and of course uh, with um, uh, every modernization in the discourse. So we have the biggest, the, bi the biggest theories in international relations such as idealism, functionalism, uh, classical realism, uh, imperialism, and so on. But from these main theories, we have in time other theories, neorealism, neomercantilism, interdependency, dependency, globalism, and so on. And so on. I hope that uh, this sketch will be useful for you in order to understand how the, how the knowledge about theories and their research methods evolve in time and um, in complexity. Um, moving further, um, a theory. Um, or an alternative concept to theory uh, should uh, respond to several uh, uh, several questions. Uh, we as individ individuals should uh, quest uh, and should maintain our interest for knowledge. And uh, uh, another uh, another assumption is that real historical, social, economic, and political genetic context we must take into account. But uh, every time we must put our questions too, because we have to not just uh, use a methodology, but to question that methodology and to try to find our own answers. And of course, uh, talking about what uh, happened in time, previous uh, concepts and developments, uh, we can say that uh, yes, we can build on what happened until now, but we have uh, to be open to new uh, to new research methods, to new approaches, and to find our answers for today uh, today problems. So uh, I think a theory so should explain. Uh, on the one hand, and uh, also bring, bring some uh, light in other aspects. Um, when we talk for a global, about the globalization, for example, in the 80s, uh, the accent was put on economic, we can say economic dimension of globalization, but now we, we talk about other dimensions, such as cultural dimension, uh, um, cultural dimension, uh, environment dimension, and so on. So uh, as the society develops, uh, also uh, the interest, uh, our interests uh, develops, and uh, we should uh, go a little bit farther than, um, uh, than our predecessors for the, in order to attain a better life for all. So, Let's go a little bit far, farther. What is international order? International order is a very important concept in the sociology of international relations. We can say it is that framework of activities which supports the elementary or primary purposes of the state. These are the preservation of the system and society of states, maintaining the interdependence and external sovereignty of states, peace and the common goals of social life. For example, limiting violence through cooperation, the stability of possession, and so on. So we have to make a distinction between states, the system of states or the international system on the one hand, and on the other hand, we have the society of states. Uh, the society or states or the international society, in fact, uh, uh, some uh, researchers said that it, this is, should be the future uh, in the development of humanity. When a group of states based on common interests and values form a society in the sense that they are bound by a set of common rules uh, in their relation and share work within common institutions. In Martin Wright's vision, international society is the expression of cooperation in international affairs, 
the existence of a di di diplomatic system, international laws and institutions. It is, uh, it is defined by the following features, such as unique society made up of other more organized societies called states. The number of its members is always smaller than that of ordinary society. Its members are mo much more heterogeneous with differences in territorial size, position, geographical resources, population, cultural ideals, and so on. Its members far exceed the lifespan of people, the absence of a world of state and the coexistence of a large number of so sovereign states do not invalidate the term of international society. In fact, some authors says, said, say that um, the most important proof of the existence of an international society is the development of international law. Um, the value of international society, according to Vincent, is to introduce order in the anarchic world by orientating the international behavior towards the observance of the normative principles. While Hans Morgenthau proposes the balance of power as a way of correcting and controlling the behavior of actors. The force of moral norms, the restraint of, the, of uh, violent tendencies by coercitive means coexist since internal morality cannot be elevated to the international norm, for the moment uh, at least. The next slide, please. Um, or the international society is the consequence of the perception of common interests related to the basic purposes of life, the rules that prescribe behavior and the institution that ensure the effectiveness of these rules. We have uh, several concepts here. The common interest in uh, meaning that states are united by common interests stemming from fear of violence, fear of instability ag of agreements, fears of insecurity. The rules the international society, in the international society, the rules can have the status of international law, moral rules, habits of practice, operational rules. And the third one is the concept of institutions. States themselves are the main institution of the society of states. The states administer the rules of the international society directly or indirectly through international organizations. Um, talking about societal security, it's a concept which appeared in the context in the 90s in the context of European School of Security, uh, especially, uh, re and it was uh, represented by the institutes such as uh, from Copenhagen and Stockholm, and. Um, it is represented by um, by authors like Ole Wawer and Barry Buzan. In Ole Wawer, understanding society is a human entity resulting from, from a process of coexistence and association between people and groups that carry a number of common attributes, such as race, ethnicity, language, history, geography, and that express common feelings such as identity, symbols, and values. Classical European sociology, um, and I, uh, um, I um, uh, meant to mention here Spencer, Durkheim, and Tonis highlights the contractual nature of the association, uh, the moral and the organic character of society. But at Ferdinand Tonis, society is an association and a community at the same time. It is an entity with its own identity. In Max Weber, a nation is a community of feeling that will adequately manifest itself in the form of uh, its own state. The state is a part of society and society is more than the state. It's the other side. In this situation, secu state security is not always the security of society. And societal security refers to those threats to the foundation of the state, primarily of, of a moral nature. So today we can say we have political security, which um, uh, many times is associated with national security, individual security or physical security of individuals and societal security, uh, meaning moral security of the society. So as you can see, um, such uh, the advantages of uh, the societal security uh, f 
First, it allows bringing pressing issues of identity, migration, terrorism, trafficking on the current security agendas and provides a unified explanation of the dis disruptive processes in the field of integration and disintegration. Secondly, uh, it uh, identifies one of the key weaknesses of integration theories, namely the lack of references for identity issues. And the talking about Europe uh, here is uh, the case of European Union and the difference between uh, national publics and uh, the elite from Brussels. And certainly, societal security provides an extension of security theory. So, uh, European School of Security considered that in the midst of more of modern and postmodern debate on the state, which implies a weaker, weaker states, society can take over some of its responsibilities. Okay. Uh, moving a little bit to the environment security, um, as we can see uh, due to the pollution and in the last decades, we are confronting with, um, with many problems such as food crisis, energy crisis, um, environment crisis and all kind of uh, meteorological uh, disasters. So environment security is very important for sociology, for globalization, and for a lot of fields. And it should be taken seriously into account uh, at also at the level of international organizations. Environment security encompasses the interactive dynamics of the diverse human and natural networks that constitute the modern world. Furthermore, environment as a resource has strategic significance for national states, uh, for uh, their natural resources like water, oil, gas, and various other minerals. But increasing state control over environment and natural resources has spillover effects such as environmental degradation resulting in a new catastrophe. This includes uncontrolled migration, high population growth, and human casualties. Such catastrophes have become real security concerns for the affected states. This is uh, an extract from Matthew and McDonald's from 2004. Okay. In a Delphi paper, Shaukat Hassan discussed the relationship between the environment foundation of a nation and its effect on the economy. According to his argument, continuous environment and environmental calamities decrease the economic growth of a nation, hamper its social cohesion, and destabilize its political structure. Uh, environmental change reduces economic opportunity for a country by causing demographic displacements within states and across international borders. An unexpected movement of population across the international border raises political tension between neighboring countries. And I'm sure that uh, you can find the very many uh, examples. There are many debates on environment as the primary source of conflict or cause of war. For example, Alan DuPont argues that environmental difficulties are unlikely to be the primary cause of major conflict between states. Environmental issues, according to DuPont, interact with more direct causes of conflict to prolong or complicate existing disputes. For example, uh, environmental degradation can create refugee crises between two neighboring countries. Daniel Dierney has also opposed considering environmental degradation as a reference object of international security. According to Dierney, the concept of national security as opposed to national interest or, or well-being has been just centered upon organized violence. He gives the example of natural calamities like earthquakes or hurricanes that had caused excessive damage. Um, okay. So, the environmental security agenda, we can say nowadays it includes disturbance of ecosystem, climate change, loss of biodiversity, deforesti deforesti uh, deforestation, desertification, and other forms of soil erosion. Uh, secondly, energy crisis, depletion of natural energy resources such as wood, oil, various forms of pollution due to the energy production or and distribution, uh, oil, nuclear, chemical, demographic crisis, uh, food crisis, economic crisis, and uh, not least, civil unrest. 
So um, we can see how, how important is the environment in a globalized world today. And we can say that also maybe the environment uh, can be also the cause of the current pandemic, who knows. So because if uh, the human, uh, if the individual um, influence the nature so much in order to attain economic goals, there comes a time when the nature comes against us. So maybe this uh, environment uh, crisis uh, should be um, should be a very important item of the security international security agenda. And finally, about global civil society, what is global civil society? Uh, I must say that we still not have a global civil society, but we have some incipient uh, incipient uh, trends of constitution of constitution of a, civ a global civil society. Uh, this should be, in my opinion, a world in which all people recognize and respect human reality and the value of all others. A world where people are brought together to cross-border civil associations, local, national, internationals. A world where people share a sense of justice. They share a basic agreement on the basic requirements of the justice, fairness of the institution that governs their lives. A world where all people have reason to hope for the future. A world that provides the right access to these opportunities and that their children will have better lives than their parents had. So I hope that we as humanity can evolve, evolve in some in a global civil society in which every individual has its place and his right to a happy life. So moving forward, we arrive finally at the human security concept. Uh, this is uh, a concept, um, um, if I can say, um, projected by United Nations systems at uh, the, the end of the previous century. And uh, human security includes several dimensions, economic security, food security, health security, if we talk about pandemia, environmental security, personal security, community security, and political security. So as you can see, uh, human security refers to the security of the human being, analyzed from every point of view. Uh, in the contemporary world, uh, we must take into account all uh, these dimensions. Uh, when uh, we think about when we think about um, public policy at the level of a state, um, when we talk about um, let's say um, about global problems in, inter in international organizations. Uh, in such an interconnected uh, world, we still must focus on individuals. So this, uh, I think, would be a ma it will be and it is a major challenge for the United Nations systems. And um, maybe we can link with um, uh, sustainable development goals um, and um, of course when we talk about human security we must talk about uh, this uh, these goals so uh, when we talk um, about human security approach uh, and principles we can say that human security is people-centered, is multi-sectoral, comprehensive, context-specific, and prevention-oriented. So uh, this is another very important aspect that we have to prevent and, and not to just let it happen. It, uh, the prevention is better than finding solution after an event occurs. So um, when we talk about people-centered principles, in human security should be inclusive and participatory, open, open, flexible. And when we talk about multi-sectoral, uh, we, uh, we have in mind that should promote dialogue among different actors from different sectors and fields. 
and of course um, help them to ensure coherence and coordination across uh, traditionally separate sectors and fields. When we talk about comprehensive, uh, of course, um, we have uh, to maintain our vision, our holistic analysis. I mean, uh, okay, we study in sociology and in other of international relations and in other fields affect an event but in the same time we have uh, uh, to have we have to see the uh, the whole part the whole system context specific and of course uh, prevention of uh, further little please okay Um, a very useful um, I, uh, guide for uh, development strategies is the Human Security Handbook. And um, I consider it like uh, as a starting point for the, uh, any kind of strategy. Uh, when we talk about um, human security strategy, social strategy, national development strategy, uh, so um, this uh, is a, is quite a very good uh, methodological tool, and um, uh, which encom uh, encompass every dimension of human security. Um, when um, we talk about development in general, I think. Uh, there should be a very large uh, there should be very large consultations in the articulation phases of the strategy and i mean that uh, the decision makers should um, should um, attract more the researchers uh, the actors economic actors the ngos and all uh, social groups interested in some issues when uh, they are designing a strategy. That is a human security strategy, uh, an environment strategy, a national development strategy. So um, starting from what we had until now, on starting from current strategies, we had to observe and identify the missing gaps uh, and what what we lack until now when analyzing and um, designing a development strategy. So I think this uh, human security handbook and other, there are many other handbooks can be a very useful tool uh, and uh, for, um, for projecting such strategies. So in conclusion, as you can see, there are very many concepts which are common to sociology of international relations, to theories of international relations, to geopolitical analysis, to economic theories, uh, to globalization theories. So when we try to analyze a subject for uh, for our papers, for our problems, for our politicians, I don't know. Uh, we have to we have to pass through an exhaustive, uh, very large, um, a live, very large amount of disciplines and research methods. But we have to be careful not to lose in this uh, complex of theories and to have in mind that finally we should preserve that we have to find um, find solutions so yes we make research but in the end we have to find it's uh, let's see it's real up, up application or it's real use for the society we live on. So this uh, should be, I, I promote a more engagement of the researchers in the society in general, not uh, for my country, not in Europe, but everywhere. I think uh, that the researcher and the academia in general 
tends to analyze a little bit from uh, afar uh, the contemporary problems and to not involve in politics. Of, of, of course, I know politics is, uh, is uh, not is not very nice let's say uh beautifully but um maybe you sh we should try more to uh, to bring a difference and to try what we can and to network well, network uh with each other in order to promote a new let's say a new current in the approach of policies and politics so um if we have better solution, try to uh, see them uh, see see them in uh, applied in laws and everything. So I think it is important for us to engage more in our societies. Thank you very much. Thank you now for a thought-provoking presentation. And uh, now um, I would request the participants to ask their questions. Of course. Well, I tried to just uh, give some hints here, um, uh, some uh, concepts, some ideas in order the participants to study themselves some direction and uh, authors and so on. This, so we can say that it, that it was a kind of introduction in in sociology of international relation and other fields, let's say. But um, I always tried to connect disciplines. Um, I try to apply international relations in public administration, for example, in my country when uh, I work on um, development strategies for uh, towns or so I try to use what I learn in um, in academia and in universities or what I teach uh, to use where when I could uh, in public administration when I uh, was consulted of course so I, I think it is important to uh, to reach a stage when you connect all the knowledge you have and try to apply to the common uh, to the daily problems you you have in front of you i think uh, it's the ultimate goal of everything we learn <laughs> to find solutions and uh, use all these theories and research methods to find sol solutions to concrete problems thank you uh, good evening ma'am uh, yes. This is uh, this is Rakesh Chaudhary from okay. Kolkata. Ma'am, uh, I just want to know what are the challenges that you have faced while doing the research in this particular field because it is the sociology of the international relations. It's very, yes. Uh, you know, it's not so easy because whenever we are engaged with some social issues, we always face challenges, and that is also of international relations where politics are always involved. Any political kind of ideas are always involved, and the, and then on that the social issues which you are trying to study. So you have applied a research method. What are the challenges that you have faced? How and how you overcome those challenges? Ah, um, the <laughs> the most challenging is uh, when we talk, uh, when uh, we analyze the groups and the individuals. Uh, it's sometimes it's very it's very difficult to quantify um, some trends when we, you make research. Uh, okay, we we make a survey. You make uh, a qualitative uh, qualitative uh, research, uh, diachronic research, but. Uh, sometimes it is very difficult to work with people and to to um, to extract from uh, the database uh, some uh, let's say some laws some some trends and uh, but of course we cannot neglect the social aspects when we talk about international re relations because this is human nature so i think um, 
even if uh, it is very challenging, well, for example, when we talk about public diplomacy, about uh, all kinds of discourses, about uh, transnational movements, uh, there are so many events uh, on Instagram, as the previous speaker said, uh, in the online media, is, uh, they are very difficult to, to quantify, but it's not impossible. For example, mathematical models are very useful, or from uh, cybernetics is very useful. So you have to find the best, uh, the, let's say, the best set of methods that works for you, uh, what you want to uh, to demonstrate. Uh, so, um, well, of course, we, you start with uh, a very good uh, liter literature review, but after that, you you have to put your own models and with your pen in hand to try to think effectively what uh, what I want to demonstrate here and what are my strong points, weak points, and so on and what um, maybe I lack. And it is also very important when, when you do research to give this research to be read uh, by more researchers, uh, more people around you, because sometimes uh, you, are, uh, you are so focused on your research that uh, you don't see some things. And, but um, um, from an... Um, external individual uh, may uh, may uh, see what you didn't see so it is very important to be all your research in the draft stages to be put uh, for review for constructive critics to others uh, others researchers and friends so it depends. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know what uh, what subject do you have in mind, but uh, of course, so uh, we can talk better when uh, <laughs> when you give me the direction, a kind of title, a kind of let's say hypothesis, and of course, from there you should build. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Ma hello. Yes, hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. This is Kishore Das from Odisha, ma'am. Nice to meet you, Kishore. Yes. Uh, so I have a question. Yes. Uh, so, what is the best research method in sociology, from your point of view, when it comes to international relations? Ah, uh, international relations. The best. Best. Oh, okay. Uh, it is uh, quite difficult because when we talk about international relations, um, um, we have, have to be very clear from um, first what we want to analyze, in what theory of international relation we can, uh, we can attach. And after that, the social facts attached to to those uh, international relation uh, facts. So, um, well, when we talk about, for, for uh, my example, uh, for, for about the societal security, I um, use uh, this uh, method when I talk when uh, an, I analyze um, Central Asia geopolitics. So uh, societal security was very important for my analysis when I um, when I try to figure out, uh, for example, uh, the the region uh, insecurities and the region challenges to uh, to the geopolitics of Central Asia and for to the international actors. So I try to demonstrate how, for example, um, population, um, terrorist groups, um, human or women rights, and so on, influence the policies and foreign policies of 
Central Asian states and of course their relation with uh, major powers. So uh, I think uh, we should uh, see the sociology of international relations in connection with theory of international relations and in connection with other uh, fields because you can bring from us uh, solely a uh, one direction to to de describe completely what you what you want to describe so the most important is um, uh, yes, I made a lot of uh, quantitative research on Central Asia and uh, of course I try to identify uh, some, um, let's say, patterns of behaviors on social groups, for example. And um, yes, uh, there were uh, several, uh, several uh, different sociological <laughs> methods I applied. Well, I can say that um, depends what you, you you choose in international relations. If you choose a region, an event, a foreign policy, let's say, uh, so it depends. So in order of this, you can choose or the empirical uh, method methods or uh, the uh, quantitative methods or the qualitative methods so from this uh, this for me was uh, more empirical and uh, methods and on some parts also qualitative methods but it depends your research <laughs> thank you thank you ma'am for the nice explanation okay yeah i try to give a real example <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Do we have any more questions? It seems we do not have any more questions. Uh, thank you, ma'am for a very thought-provoking presentation thank and finding time to uh, share your views with us. Thank you. Thank you too. And I hope in future we can develop uh, some uh, some directions from here when we talk about development policies uh, and, uh, and, and every other initiative Sayar had. Uh, I think education and development are very important in the uh, nowadays world and uh, we should focus on this aspect when we project uh, research and public policies for the people in the future. So I think the challenge for this century should be development for all. This is my opinion. This is my conclusion. <laughs> yes, well, we also look forward to some collaborative research. Yes, I am open to projects. So my email, I have several emails. From I think so with the help of Sayat, I can give you my email. Really, ma'am, it's really wonderful presentation. Really, uh, we're, we are getting lots of knowledge uh, regarding the international relationship. Definitely, we'll hope next time this sort of presentation should be conducted by IR. Welcome to India, ma'am, in virtual mode. <laughs> in this situation, this it is was just the beginning. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. Yeah, thank you. Ma'am, one thing I would like to know, uh, when you are collecting the data, or when you are doing the research in international mode, then what are the parameters you should consider when collecting the data of the sample size? Yeah. Suppose you are finding the relationship between the two countries, not two countries. If you want to the cultural uh, program of the uh, European zone, so how could you collect the sample? In uh, random sample you are going or in cluster form you are going? Mm, well, um, usually when um, I tried to analyze a subject, uh, in the field of international relations, I try to 
think about all the actors involved. And uh, when I t uh, when I talk about uh, comparative uh, analysis between three countries, I try to analyze everything: political, economic, cultural. When I talk about a certain policy in the European Union, I try to uh, to cover all uh, 27 member states. So I think it depends if uh, if you are doing. Um, let's say a mark um uh, market plan a uh, geopolitical analysis and uh, it, it depends so uh, for some research it was more useful for me to focus uh, on several common topics uh, available for both countries for three countries and for other topics who are more more useful to the same topic in all the actors involved so it depends what you want to analyze okay ma'am thank you ma'am but we can discuss if you if you have a topic let's see what we can find sure, sure. thank you what methods we can use <laughs> okay thank you very much again for your invitation thank you ma'am uh, that brings us to the end of the second session uh, for today and also the end of our five day program. So now we will uh, officially bid goodbye to Nam. And uh, thank you, Nam, for your time. And we move on to the valedictory session. I welcome all the participants to this valedictory session and I congratulate the participants on successful completion of this five-day international FDP on research methodology. Uh, the research methodology program that has been organized jointly by SIAD and PMM wouldn't have been possible or successful without the participants. So I feel that the participants are the main, uh, the main focus and uh, of this, for the, and they are to be congratulated for the success of this MDP. Now, moving on to the valedictory session, uh, I welcome Dr. Shantanu Basu, the IPC coordinator of VMN, to deliver the valedictory address. Welcome, sir, and over to you. Uh, thank you, Moon Moon. I hope I uh, uh, you can hear me down there. Yes, oh, you are Okay, fine, thanks. Uh, so after the brainstorming sessions uh, for the last five days, five days and 10 sessions, we are now at the fag end of the seminar. We are kind of winding it up to a close. Uh, surely it has been very enlightening. Whatever uh, parts of the seminar I have heard, I have listened to, I found it very enlightening. At the same time, I understand that uh, a five day seminar does leave a little exhausted also. So I'm not going to tire your patience. I'm not going to wear your patience thin. I'm going to make this uh, valedictory speech of mine short one and hopefully sweet also. Firstly, uh, in fact, uh, what I will try to do is that uh, I will try to point out some of the key takeaways for me from this uh, five day seminar. <clears throat> and I will try to itemize some of the important uh, issues that I think has come out from this five day seminar. For me, the first thing is that a seminar like this on research is a very topical one. Now, topical because a VMM, Vivekan Mission Mohabit Dalai, is an undergraduate college, and there are a lot of young faculty there, out there. And with career advancement schemes and uh, API scores being the norm of the day, I think any exposure to research, any exposure of how we can uh, show up our research uh, prowess, or rather we can extend our research faculties, any workshop or seminar on that is a very welcome step. I don't know how many of young faculties have been a part of it. I'm not very sure about it. But I think uh, those of uh, our faculty who have been a part of it has surely been enriched by this. With uh, with publishing now becoming a uh, kind of de rigueur in a, in a uh, research and in uh, 
teaching also i think exposure to these kind of seminars is a is a must in fact so i think this uh, has been a very uh, a boon to them has come to them as a uh, blessing for them i just hope they had made good use of it the second thing for me is that uh, as i noted in the inaugural speech of uh, dr vike malhotra the chief guest that though the research output from india is large the quality is always not very good in fact he mentioned that in scopus and other uh, such a uh, uh, digital archives the research from india ranked very high the number the quality as the quantity but a uh, citation index and other such a uh, paraphernalia by which we can measure the quality of research india research doesn't always do very well in fact he pointed out and i am not mistaken that uh, out of uh, the patents uh, 70% of them come from outside india outside india means indians who live outside so that's quite a tragedy that uh, 1.5 billion of us here just contribute 30% of the patents well our diaspora people living outside our fellow countrymen who are making a living out there in outside they are contributing more than 70% so i think uh, that's ma that makes it very clear that uh, though the qual though the quantity of research from india uh, is very uh, good in in numbers but the quality is always not up to the mark and you just see also in the last few years with uh, with the emphasis of plagiarism with the emphasis on uh, plagiarism uh, anti plagiarism software or plagiarism, plagiarism detection, uh, detection software has made it amply clear that there is a lot of problem with indian research i think this kind of same the participants the participants some of the research tools by which they can conduct quality research i think research in india the output which is large has also to be uh, qualitatively of a very high standard and i think seminars and workshops like this with participation from all across the world with resource persons from all across the world who bring to this seminar their own uh, experience will help the participants here to uh, augment or enhance their own research capabilities i think in this way uh, this seminar uh, again has been a shot in arm again has been a grand success and i think participants who have been a part of it will surely uh, take this uh, as something which will help them in their research going forward the third point that i want to make is that uh, this is a collaborational journey that we have stitched we i mean vivekananda mission mahavidyalaya has stitched with syad obviously skill development is uh, an important facet of a collaboration journey by skill development we normally mean employable skills by skill development we mainly mean vocational skills skills that will uh, help uh, to earn skills that will uh, in fact uh, help the uh, those who are uh, involved in it to earn money but i think here what has happened is that the skill that you have been inculcated or the skill that have been disseminated is research and development skill it is not maybe employable in the strict sense of the term but research and development has also a large part to play and i think this collaborational journey has also helped in skill development but not of the employable variety maybe but something which is based on research and development and skills associated with knowledge creation knowledge dissemination uh, and information so i think uh, so this is another uh, in fact uh, we have uh, we have we have planned uh, with syad a long journey forward and this i think is is another of those uh, turns in our journey skill development also of the research and development variety i will take this occasion though i know there is a formal vote of thanks waiting after this but i will take this occasion to especially thank the two heads of the two heads the head of vmm dr manobendu shahu and the chairman syad dr bishwajit rajchoudhury for putting this up for stitching this collaboration journey 
and i'll also thank uh, others from our institution uh, i here see dr shomusha and dr munmunte for stitching this up along with those at uh, sayad uh, for making this uh, possible for seeing to it that this seminar does happen and also because i know that most of the uh, resource persons uh, have in fact uh, uh, you may say that sayad has been responsible for most uh, for including most resource persons it has been a privilege for us vmm to be a part of this sayad journey and i thank once again dr uh, dr bishu roy choudhury for uh, having us with him and for helping us in this journey uh, towards greater research and development uh these are some of the few points that i want to make i, I also take the occasion uh, to uh, to celebrate the fact that this seminar has been a success the success because uh, as um, we know that this seminar is a kind of a seminar where uh, it's not a free seminar in the sense that people had to pay for it and in spite of the fact that the participant has been quite healthy uh i i noted in the inaugural session also and also in this vaidy session i just came a little before the vaidy session i noted that participant has been healthy and considering the fact that uh, people had to uh, kind of fork out money for this so i i really must take this occasion to uh, celebrate the success of the seminar uh personally just let me make one point uh i would really have wished to be a part of this seminar for i have missed large chunks of it uh, due to engagements uh, but i but i want that uh, this seminar that the deliberations that happened uh, for the last 5 days uh if if we can put this up in a youtube channel maybe our college has a youtube channel uh sayad also in the, in the sayad website i also noted that they have video links and they have videos also so if this uh, whatever deliberations happened last 5 days could be put up in some cloud of a cloud form in either sayad website or in our college youtube channel then maybe someone like me who missed some portion seminar could uh, enjoy a uh, could uh, could be enlightened uh, those portions at our leisure so i think these are some of the brief points that I, that that i wanted to make i want second take this occasion to thank both sayad and vmm and all those who are associated with it all those who have made this collaboration journey possible and i think that this is only a small step in fact we had uh, begun our uh, movement forward with the first national education policy seminar this is the second that we are doing and we have further uh, we have far uh, other things also in our uh, we have also other things planned so i think this will just uh, uh, this will just take us forward and this is a uh, this is in fact uh, the beginning of the journey and there are lot many things that we intend to do a lot many uh, seminars and lot many workshops and lot many collaboration uh, journeys that we intend to take with sayad this is just a small step we intend to moving forward with sayad we hope sayad will be with us we understand that we could have done much more because uh, i i remember in march 2020 we presented from sayad visited our college but we haven't really been able to take it uh, that forward because as you know the college has been in shutdown mode for last one year and two months from march 15th uh, 2020 and this is may 14 2021 so the last 14 months the college has been shut down mode had the college been open maybe we would have been able to uh, get this uh, collaboration journey of ours far more in track we haven't been able to we had made some small progress but there is a lot lot more to be done uh, i just uh, wish that this goes on and uh, and uh, this is my fond uh, you may say uh, Uh, going back that had we not been in this shutdown mode maybe we could have progressed much much more but things are as they are and uh, we need to uh, embrace this opportunity this seminar i think uh, this workshop this five day seminar uh, goes a long way forward and uh, i just hope this journey continues uh, so that's some of the points that i wanted to make i once again uh, is is a privilege for me to be a part of this vaidy session it gives me great pleasure to address you and uh, some of the discussions that i heard in whatever uh, small chunks that i did manage to catch up for example in our global speech of dr vk malhotra and uh, and the right and before the right session i was listening to uh, uh, irina lonella pop uh, all the way from outside india uh, it was very stimulating and thank you again for having me here with this 
I end this short speech of mine. Thank you. Thank you all once again. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I request the participants, if any two of you would give your feedback regarding this MDP. And preferably, preferably, we would have a male uh, participant and a female participant. I request any two of you to come forth and share your experience with us. I will request all the participants uh, for uh, two minutes uh, if they can uh, just uh, open their video so that we can take a snapshot because uh, in the whole program uh, we only uh, saw two or three participants so it's a request from the organizer if you can uh, switch on your video so that we can take a snapshot all together. It's a memory that we joined together for the five days, spent too much of quality times. So thank you. So please, if you all participants can unmute, uh, open their this. Just requesting all the participants, uh, those who are not, please switch on their video so that we can take a few snapshots. Thank you all. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. And thank you uh, to PMM and Sayat for organizing such a beautiful uh, seminar. Uh, uh, you know, a resourceful seminar. Sir, sir, uh, sir sorry to interrupt. Day. We'll come back once we po once the program will be formally ended. We'll ask the participants to tell their feedback here only. So please bear with us. Homes. Professor Rajudhi, are you there? Say to Homes. Say to Homes. 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 So, Madam is there to. No, 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 no. So, can you give the vote of thanks? Then Munun ma'am will give it. Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to. I uh, thank the heads of both the institutions, that is Dr. M. Shao, the principal of the MM, and Dr. Vishwajit Thanchaudhne, the chairman, Sayag. Uh, thank you for the constant support and for being the backbone of this FDP. Next, I would like to thank the convener of this FDP, that is Dr. Shobhu Shaha. He has been very helpful uh, throughout the sessions. He has also helped in the presentations. And also, congratulations, sir, for a very resourceful presentation. Next, I would like to thank our chief guest, Dr. Vikram Manhotra, for a very thought-provoking uh, speech where he highlighted where we are lagging behind in research and uh, the, for showing us the way as to how to improve the quality of our research so, as, so that India also can occupy a prominent position in the Global arena of research. Ma'am, your video I... is switched off. If you can open your video and just give okay, your. Okay, sorry. Uh, next, I would like to thank all our, all our eminent resource persons. Their uh, presentations have been very resourceful and enriching. And I hope all the participants have enjoyed and they have benefited from this FDP. And they are also going to be uh, going to apply these whatever they have learned here in all their future endeavors. Now, coming to the eminent speakers that we had over the last 10 sessions, I would 
again put it on record our gratitude towards them for sharing their views and encouraging us in our journey of research methodology first dr a garg who had shown us how to plan our research followed by dr rania langpao who showed us how we can improve our writing skills for our, our writing skills giving special emphasis on uh, grammar vocabulary as well as formatting the second day we had another two very eminent resource persons dr aslam khan who talked on the content analysis and dr arubindo bhandari where all our participants were engaged till 9:30 and we learned new ways of exploring research or literature review the third day we had with us dr sangeeta agarwal who again emphasized on the importance of literature review and dr devashish bishwas who showed us a hands on experience of Uh, regression analysis and how to analyze the results that we obtain by applying SPSS. The fourth day we had Dr. Shobhu Shah who showed us the methods to be employed in research uh, in statistical analysis and which methods are to be used when. Followed by Dr. J K Dash who showed us the right way by citing. some examples of real applications of statistical analysis and uh, statistical methods and last day today we had uh, uh, for the first lecture by dr abhay kumar who showed us with examples the different types of research in different fields and lastly dr irena pop who uh, showed us the uh, who showed us how, uh, or shared with us how we search in the field of international relations so thank you all the eminent parties uh, uh, eminent resource persons who have found time and accepted our humble re- invitation and being a part of this activity and last but not the least i would formally like to thank all our participants who have been actively engaged in all the 10 sessions and i hope that you all have had an enriching experience and i formally welcome all the participants to our college wherein once we see happy days so that uh, now we have met and we have introduced ourselves virtually i hope that in future with uh, better days to come we and happier days we can all meet in person at our college vmm and i formally invite you there now coming to a uh, uh, feedback form as all uh, of you uh, have been uh, inquiring about the feedback form the uh, feedback link has been shared on your chat box and i hope that the feedback will, uh, link will also be sent individually to your mails so once you fill up the feedback link the certificates that is the e certificates will be mailed to uh, each one of you in the coming uh, in the coming days so uh, thank you all and if you want to share anything uh, please go forth and do so now requesting the participants if you want to say anything any feedback about our 5 uh, days uh, faculty development program so you can switch on your video unmute yourself and please uh, share your take away or anything uh, what should we un- improve anything what comes in your mind we are very open and we try to improve ourselves so any expert opinion if we receive from you that's a good gesture from your part so that hello. we can improve ourselves so anyone hello sir yes sir please hello sir yes uh, this is kishor the from odisha uh, so uh, actually i am very much thankful to saira for our such a wonderful five day long fdp which was well organized 
and brain spinning also so I, in fact i enjoyed a lot long day lot it was quite useful uh, when it comes to getting the papers at the end i am full to show my respects sir and moon moon day madam uh, for the success of this five day meeting i would like to connect with the side in my studio thank you thank you sir anyone else uh yes good evening uh, good evening ma'am and good evening sir uh, i just has one suggestion to you if uh, if uh, if you don't mind please uh, that is uh, there is there were some few eminent speakers who said in their presentation that this one hour session is not enough so i would request in the future when you are organizing such seminars then please arrange uh, at least give the speakers the topics for example uh, to me The, the professor bishash devashish bishash sir when he was giving the uh, presentation i felt that that one hour was one hour was not really it was not the time i think he should uh, you know he, he was he should given he should uh, mean you should have given two to three hours so if possible if anything is possible in the future that that eminent speakers get only one session in the in one day in this five day long or six day long then i think it will be helpful for the audience as a participant i felt so so i frankly speak out oh, i'm very sorry if you have if you mind but uh, this came to me am i mone holo eta ektu bola dorkar tai jonno ami no we are always open to such a criticism actually we can do better with criticism so we are always open to such healthy criticism <laughs> yeah we take this uh, definitely uh, in the next seminar or next fdp if we organize definitely we we'll look into this issue uh, but i would like to make one thing clear uh, that uh, when uh, i think dr aurobindo bhandari had presented beyond one hour that was still 9:30 we the organizer had had been with him and we had not tried to stop him so if any of the uh, resource persons would have uh, gone beyond time we were like very sporting they would have accepted it like we have done for dr aurobindo bhandari yes yes that's true any other participants uh, if uh, he or she wants to share his or her views uh, please uh, go ahead uh, we may take thank any thank you so much sir really it's a wonderful effort by sayat and your uh, colleagues thank you munmun ma'am it's a really wonderful fdp program uh, it is completely 100% success as sir has told we have taking the charges this is not a charge this is a value for money value for knowledge so really we want this type of session continuously from sayat and you so really uh, so mr you are the good presenter and uh, simply way you have completely you are given the suggestion how to do the research process method everything in a statical way really Uh, you are super explanation and really uh, in regression portion uh, biswas sir whatever has taught really it's so wonderful uh, it, it it should be showcased uh, presentation really thank you thanks to entire team we thank want you uh, miss uh, thank you somnath sir for your kind words uh, definitely we will take your advice and definitely will look into this in near future thank you thank sir you. Okay, we have a suggestion from uh, I don't know uh, Mrs. Jolly Chatterjee. She says that if you have professions for hands-on training, it would be much better. But now, as you can know, uh, as you know, that uh, given the conditions that we are in, all locked up, uh, so hands-on training is not possible actually virtually. And we have also experienced very various technical glitches while these presentations were going on. So yes, we will see happier days. We will surely organize a uh, FDP wherein uh, we can have a hands-on training where each one of you will uh, sit in front of a computer and we can deliver the lectures so that as the resource persons they 
show you how to do it you can also follow them right on so that's it now we will we are looking forward to such organizing such workshops in uh, future adding to ma'am uh, uh, to answer miss choudhury uh, saira din as uh, basically organizing uh, uh, individually the workshops for spss for research methodology and i took part as a resource person in uh, two or three of the uh, sessions basically uh, where we are providing the hand on experience in online mode also so generally we are planning to do such kind of uh, research methodology application in spss program uh, if you just go to the website of saira uh, definitely you will come to know this type of programs uh, where we are providing it five days online programs on research methodology uh i was the resource person over there uh, so definitely and we have their prominent research person like arobindo bhandari sir was also a part of it so generally if you want to be part of that uh, uh, technical sessions hand on experience uh, definitely uh, we can uh, go by on uh, online mode also uh, uh, so is, sir, yeah may i say something yeah sure sir you are always uh, uh, sorry participants your voice is time. very low if you can uh, yes am i audible yeah you are you are you are okay uh, sorry uh, due to some obviously functions i i would not be able to possible to join anyway but still i have followed the lectures your feedbacks everything and thanks uh, shantanu sir for your uh, valuable speech and also the participant for your feedbacks i have already sent uh, the link of youtube channel of our sayard as that you can get all kinds of lecture recordings everything from there even if you want to hear another some valuable lectures on different subject different issues you can also get it from there number 2 tomorrow we have an another international webinar on behalf of our center for urban and built environment on covid 19 and city management if any participants here are interested to be uh, join in that webinar they can easily join i have already sent it in your chat box and regarding hands on training program what shomo sir is just uh, told you that on behalf of sayad we are continuously doing lots of training activity programs different capacity building programs we have already advertised uh, gis geoinformatics course training we have already uh, advertised for the r programming language even we are already conducted the spss training programs and very soon we are also going to start another advertisement we are also going to provide another advertisement on the spss hands on training and their r programming software will also be included so it will be a six months uh, pg diploma course if you want to join you can easily join through our website provided link and that's why i would like to say that continuously please visit our website or our facebook our our facebook page as that you can get update yourself of our, our next academic curriculum activities everything so even in the coming july we are also going to advertise for our phd program also so if you want to join you can easily join just you have to keep in touch with our social media page and website thank you hello yes abhinav sir hi uh, i will not say much but would say that this is really wonderful program because we able to uh, you know do it from home and uh, Uh, if i uh, speak about me uh, if i not join this i would have just wasted my time so by joining the program i learned a lot a uh, variety of topics and the uh, interaction with variety of experts so this is really a wonderful program and i really thank uh, bishwaji ji for his approach uh, the way you are you know conducting the programs and uh, collaborating with variety of institutions and the speakers so all the good wishes sir and please continue uh, to doing such type of programs and if possible uh, try to do the part two of this program if it is possible thank you so much okay. and good luck okay we will keep in mind and definitely uh, hopefully shomo sir is here shomo sir are you here yes i am sir. 
yes i am okay so so we sir uh, we should note the point that we can organize a part 2 of this research methodology workshop after sure. one month like that yeah sure sir sure sir and many congratulations so mayor and uh, madam also and all the institutions sorry i forgot to mention you <laughs> thank you mr walia thank, thank you thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you So we are team right now. Whenever we are going to associate, then we are team. So if you give thanks to me or Somo sir, then automatically it vice versa. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So Hello? and the feedback link is already available in your mailbox and the chat box too. Uh, there was a place given for your feedback. You freely write whatever comes in your mind, so that we can uh, definitely. uh look into these issues and uh, develop or uh, develop our stem for for the constructive criticism whatever you are going to make so you are open uh, the feedback form you just write your actual feedback no harm so that we can improve in the next course uh, onwards we can sure. incorporate sure. that yeah. thank you so much yeah. okay and abhinav uh, i would like to see you in our tomorrow's webinar because it's your field also <laughs> yes 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 i'll be there i'll be there i have yes, i have yes. we can all the link to my mail so i'll, I'll be thank there you. yeah thank you uh, any other participant who wants to come in hello uh, hello yeah please yeah so actually my name is shubhankar naha from kolkata and mm, i want to thank uh, give thanks to first of all vishwajit sir for from syed and uh, shomo sir munmun ma'am obviously for arranging such a wonderful i mean this lecture series and workshop and actually gifting us such a resourceful uh, uh, actually workshop so i definitely want to join in future courses as well and thanking you for that thank you so much thank you mr naha for your kind thank word. you and uh, also any... i would like to request one more thing that uh, if you please share your opinion your feedbacks in your social media platforms uh, on behalf of both the institution as that other participants or other uh, professors or candidates can be available to can be able to know as that they can be also in future they can be also part of that program thank you okay okay sure sir thank you uh, any anyone left or else uh, we will uh, it's 8:14 year about so another one minute uh, we can provide to participants if they wants to talk unless uh, we're going to formally end this five day long uh, fdp program i hope no one so So, Professor Raichudi, we are going to formally end it, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank so, you. So be safe. Thank you for participating. Thank you, all, one and all. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll meet soon, definitely in some other seminar. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>